Fifteen years ago, on the 21st of November, in the relatively unknown American city of Dayton in Ohio, the leaders of Bosnia's warring factions signed a peace agreement. It was to end Europe's bloodiest conflict since World War II. Some 200,000 people were killed in the conflict, two million were displaced, and the country was left divided along ethnic lines. One of the signatories of the Dayton Peace Accords was Mohamed Shakirbi. He was Bosnia's ambassador to the United Nations and then foreign minister. He was known for his impassioned pleas during the war to lift the arms embargo against the Bosnian Muslims. For the anniversary of Dayton, Euronews caught up with him at the UN headquarters in New York, where he lives. Ambassador Shakavi, thank you for talking to Euronews. You once said that uh, bad peace, and I think you were referring to the Dayton Peace Accords, was still better than a war. Uh, do you still feel that way? Absolutely. <laughs> Let me put it to you this way, in terms of my own reputation, in terms of my own well-being, that's not the case. A uh, good war would have been better than a bad peace. But imagine all the people whose lives were directly at stake. And it was my opinion that uh, peace was better than war, even perhaps an imperfect peace, even perhaps an unjust peace. Uh, however, um, I wanted to signal that I was not going to be bound by the wishes of the big powers who had, in effect, imposed the Dayton that we ended up uh, signing. And I think that Dayton still, in fact, is the root of what is still wrong with Bosnia. But on the other hand, I must say that Dayton is also the basis for peace right now. So we have to be careful, um, especially I, who I am very negative about Dayton, and who has withdrawn my signature from Dayton, about uh, trying to paint it just in, in one color. It seems by November of 95 that the Srebrenica massacre had taken place. Uh, it's almost the tide of the, of the war had been changing a bit. There had been the, the NATO airstrikes had started. Uh, why didn't the Bosnian Muslim and Croat side hold out longer? Why was it so important to sign Dayton then there was a threat against first the Croatian forces and then the Bosnian forces that we f if we did not immediately accept a ceasefire and therefore moving on to the next level negotiations that the might of, of the uh, allied forces the NATO forces particularly airstrikes could and would be used against the Croatian and and ultimately Bosnian um, uh, army um, it was a bluff. We knew it was a bluff, but it was too high a risk to take. I had a gun held to my head. Uh, that gun wasn't literally to my head. It was literally, though, to the heads of the citizens and the soldiers that I represented. And could I afford at any point in time to say, go ahead and pull the trigger, especially if it wasn't going to be my brain splattered all over the fields of Bosnia and Herzegovina? So that's why I question Bosnian diplomats, Bosnian leaders, who would now agree to Dayton as kind of a continuing foundation for Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's a foundation for peace. It's a foundation certainly for ending the war, but it's no foundation for any normal country, certainly not one for aspirations like Bosnia and Herzegovina, the aspirations of its citizens to be part of the Euro-Atlantic family. Richard Holbrook had said uh, two years ago in an interview that um, Dayton, if there hadn't been Dayton, then uh, you know, Al-Qaeda would have been preparing 9-11 out of Bosnia instead of Afghanistan. How do you react to that? Uh, with great anger. First of all, that's not true. Uh, I don't see even under those circumstances that Al-Qaeda would have ever been able to establish such a base in Bosnia as it did in some other places. Certainly, there would have been a radicalization of the Bosniak population. But terrorism is terrorism, and we, as victims of terrorism, I think understood the difference. But most importantly, I think what Richard Holbrook is trying to do is rationalize uh, the Dayton deal now, somehow that he had um, subdued a risk that was um, directed at the U.S. and Europe. Maybe worst of all, he has now in some way rationalized or legitimized the original claim of the Serbian ultranationalists, the Mladicis and Karadzicis, for the war. Because they always thought they could rally Europe 
uh, and the U.S. behind them on the war cry, well, let's get rid of the Muslims from Europe. There were elections in uh, the last month, in October, seen as really a key test for where Bosnia's future lies. Uh, it seems that the results of the elections showed that um, Bosnians still voted among ethnic lines. And then you have the Prime Minister of the Republic of Srpska more or less showing his disdain for a united Bosnia and Herzegovina. Isn't it, I hate to say it, isn't it inevitable that Bosnia has to be divided permanently? Well, I'm not the one that's going to pronounce uh, those words of, um, of death upon the country. I think the country certainly has gone beyond me, and it has a heartbeat, and hopefully it has a mind and soul of its own. Um, but let's talk about how those elections not came out but how, in fact, they were carried out. And the answer is that what we did in Dayton, upon the urging of Mladic, uh, in this case Milosevic as his representative, on the urging, therefore, of the Western alliance, including the Western representatives, is that we were told we had to accept voting and representation in office along ethnic lines. And that's why Dayton, I think, is failing over the long term. You are embedding, I emphasize the word embedding, ethnic politics. So there will be an ever and ever greater appeal to chauvinism. That's why it's important to reverse the negative consequences of Dayton right now. That's why I withdrew my signature five years ago when I saw that, in fact, the dynamics of Dayton had been allowed. So from what I understand, you signed... And then you and then you resigned. Yes. And then you withdrew your signature five Th years ago. That's correct. So I'm going to ask. I know maybe this is repeating, but I'm going to ask why did you sign it in the first place? To end the war. Uh, simple as that. It is not a coincidence that we speak of Sarajevo as the European Jerusalem. But of course, just like the Jerusalem in the Middle East, it constantly faces challenges. And the current challenge to Bosnia and Herzegovina is not from within its genetics. It is from what, what has been, in effect, imposed through uh, the Dayton Accords, which I think is really, in the long term, not, I don't want to call it a false solution. It, again, I emphasize it stopped the war, but it is not, in fact, the final uh, lasting basis for the country to prosper.